Hi guys, welcome to this page of the notes, and, and here's what we've got on this page. Uh, previously, we looked at the um, identity property of matrices, saying that if you multiply any matrix by its identity matrix, you'll get back the original matrix. What we're going to look at here is what's known as the inverse property, but before we look at matrices, let's refresh on what this means for real numbers. Here's what we said for the inverse property of real numbers. If you take any real number A, it can be any real number, positive, negative, rational, irrational, whatever. Take, pick any number, real number you want to. If you multiply that number by its inverse, which means you just put one over that number, right? remember the way this works. Those guys are going to cancel with each other, right? And you're going to be left with one. So any number multiplied by its inverse, the product is equal to one. Well, it turns out the exact same thing is also true for matrices. If you take a matrix and you multiply that matrix by its inverse, you're going to get the identity matrix. And that's exactly what I'm showing you right here. If you take any matrix, and you multiply it by its inverse, right? You're going to get the identity matrix, right? And remember, the multiplication is commutative in this case because we're getting the identity matrix. And real quick, let me make a note about what this means. Remember, if you have A, its inverse, right? The inverse of A would be 1 over matrix A. So 1 over matrix A. Right? So if this is my matrix, 1 over that matrix would be the inverse. But instead of writing it as 1 over matrix A, there's this neat little property uh, uh, about um, exponents that hopefully you remember from Algebra 1. We will definitely cover here in Algebra 2 in a later chapter, and it says this. You can bring anything out of the denominator and move it into the numerator if you change the sign of its power. This A is to the implied first power, and it's a positive first power. So how do I move this A out of the denominator and into the numerator? Well, it turns out I can bring this guy to the top by simply changing the sign of its exponent is equal to A to the negative 1. Power. So that's where this notation comes from. A to the negative first power simply means 1 over A, or the inverse matrix. And again, uh, here's what we're saying. If you take any matrix, multiply it by its inverse, you're going to get the identity matrix, which makes for some interesting problems, which we're going to do here in a second. If you have two matrices, matrix A and matrix B, and you multiply those matrices together, and you get the identity matrix. What does that mean about these two matrices? Well, we just said any matrix times its inverse gets you the identity matrix. So if you take two ma matrices and you multiply them together and get the identity matrix, these guys, A and B, must be inverses of each other because that's the only way you get the identity matrix, right? The only way you multiply two numbers together and get one is if they're inverses of each other. Same thing is true of matrices. The only way you multiply two matrices and get the identity matrix is if those matrices are inverses. And that's what we want to look at in the next couple of example problems. So let's check out the next page. And we're going to do a couple of these. Uh, here's what I'd like you to do. Uh, first, I want to know, determine whether the matrices are inverses of each other. Well, this is really easy to do, right? All I have to do is multiply the matrices together. If I multiply them together and get the identity matrix, then they're inverses. So let's see what happens. We're going to do A times B. Here we go. Remember the way multiplication works. First row, first column, here we go. Negative 4 times 1 fourth. The 4's will cancel. I'll have a negative times 1, which is just a negative 1. 2 times 1 half, the 2's cancel. I'm left with 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is a 0. And right away, I now know that they are not inverses. If this were the identity matrix, that first element would have to be a 1, right? Because I need a 1 and a 1. 0 and 0 in the other spots. But let's keep going just to make sure maybe I made a mistake. Uh, let's see. 
first row, second column, negative four times a negative one half. Well, the negatives cancel each other out. The four is reduced by the two, or uh, the four is divided by two and leaves you with two, and two times one is a positive two. Great. Two times a negative one would be a negative two. So I have a positive two minus two. Once again, that's zero. Okay, let's keep going. Second row, first column, negative two times one fourth. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna leave me with a negative one half. One times one half is a half. So I have a negative one half plus a half, which is zero. Huh. Okay, one more time. Second row, second column, negative two times a negative one half. The twos will cancel, the negatives will cancel each other out, and I'm left with a positive one. One times a negative one is a negative one. Plus one minus one is zero. So this is not, this is not the identity matrix, which means no. A and B are not inverses. They are not not inverses. All right, let's try another one of these. Again, the fastest way to find out if they're inverses is to go ahead and multiply them together. And if I get the identity matrix, then they must they must be inverses of each other. All right, three times. 3 fourths, well, uh, what I wind up with is 3 times 3, which is 9, so I wind up with 9 fourths, 9 fourths. Negative 5 times 1 fourth, right? Well, what that's going to do is that's going to leave with a negative 5 fourths. So I have 9 fourths minus 5 fourths, right? Well, 9 minus 5 is 4. So I wind up with 4 over 4, which is 1. So F times G is equal we're off to a good start. I needed that first guy to be a one, and it is. Let's keep going. Three times five eighths is gonna give me 15 eighths. Negative five times three eighths is gonna give me negative 15 eighths. So I have 15 eighths minus 15 eighths. That's zero. We're doing good this time. Let's see what happens. Negative two times three fourths. Well, negative two times three fourths is gonna give me negative six fourths. Negative six fourths. Six times one-fourth is going to be positive six-fourths. So a negative six-fourths plus six-fourths, yeah, that's zero. Keep going. Negative two times five-eighths. Well, negative two times five is going to be a minus ten. So I have negative ten-eighths. Six times three-eighths. Well, six times three is eighteen. So I have eighteen-eighths. So I have a minus ten-eighths a positive 18 eighths, which leaves me with 8 eighths, which is 1. 8 over 8 reduces to 1, and I do get the identity matrix. So are these guys inverses? Yes. F and G are inverses of each other. Guys, that's great work on finding inverses of functions. We want to look at, or um, <coughs> what we're going to look at in the next page is a couple more example problems. So head on over there, and I'll meet you guys on that page.